Mr. Murdoch doesn't want me to work. He says I have to be a career. Ever wondered about the juicy scandals and controversies that surrounded Hollywood leading ladies back in the swinging 60s? Well, you're in for a treat. Today, we're diving into the intriguing world of the 25 most hated Hollywood actresses of the 1960s. Get ready. Are you Miss Tony Miller? Yes, that's right. Are you Mr. Anderson? Oh, yes. Disclaimer. This video is created with the utmost respect and is not intended to hurt anyone's feelings. Our purpose is to provide information, entertainment, and foster a positive environment. If any content inadvertently causes discomfort, please understand it is unintentional. Number 25. Jane Fonda Now, let's turn our attention to Jane Fonda, a figure whose name still sparks controversy even decades after her actions during the Vietnam War. Jane, an accomplished actress with a career spanning over six decades, found herself in the midst of one of the most tumultuous periods in American history. Born into Hollywood royalty as the daughter of legendary actor Henry Ford, Jane's initial involvement in activism began in the 70s when she became a prominent anti-war protester. She passionately advocated for the rights of troops in the military and those resisting the draft, aligning herself with organizations like Vietnam Veterans Against the War. However, it was her controversial visit to Hanoi in 1972 that elevated her to the status of one of the most despised figures among Vietnam veterans. While touring villages, cities, and infrastructures, a series of photos showing her sitting at an NVA anti-aircraft battery earned her the famous moniker, Hanoi Jane. Rumors circulated that she might have turned over secret messages from POWs to their captors, a claim that, despite being untrue, intensified the animosity towards her. Despite a public apology and more than four decades passing since that incident, Jane Fonda's name still carries the weight of absolute hatred for many. The depth of loathing directed at her remains perplexing and serves as a stark reminder of the enduring impact of actions taken during a contentious time in American history. Number 24. Diana Rigg Moving on to Dame Diana Rigg, a distinguished actress who made her mark in film and television. While she gained recognition for her role as Countess Teresa di Vincenzo in On Her Majesty's Secret Service, it wasn't all smooth sailing on set, particularly in her interactions with co-star George Lazenby. In the iconic James Bond film, their characters got married, but the romance was short-lived as Riggs' character met a tragic end soon after the wedding. Reports of tension between Rigg and Lazenby circulated with rumors suggesting that Rigg deliberately ate garlic before love scenes to throw off her co-star. Lazenby dismissed this as a blown-up press story, attributing it to a light-hearted joke made during lunch. Despite any onset tensions, Dame Diana Rigg continued to captivate audiences across generations. In her later years, she gained newfound fame with her Emmy-nominated performance as the cunning Queen of Thorns in Game of Thrones proving that her talent and charisma transcended the rumors and challenges of her early career. Stay tuned as we unravel more tales of Hollywood's most hated actresses of the 1960s. If you're enjoying this trip through the past, don't forget to hit that like button and share your thoughts in the comments below. Now, let's delve into the next actress on our list. Number 23, Sophia Loren. Now, let's shine a spotlight on the enigmatic Sophia Loren. In 1960, she was a global sensation, basking in the limelight of her unparalleled beauty and talent. However, not everyone in Hollywood was equally enchanted, especially not Charlton Heston. Loren, who would later make history by winning the first ever acting Oscar for a non-English language film, Two Women, La Ciociara, has been making waves in Hollywood since signing her initial five-picture deal with Paramount in 1956. Her filmography boasted star-studded titles alongside the likes of Cary Grant, Clark Gable, and Frank Sinatra in movies like It Happened in Naples, Houseboat, The Pride and the Passion, and The Millionaires with Peter Sellers. She effortlessly navigated both drama and comedy, displaying a powerful physical presence on screen. So, what went awry with Heston? Heston, a major star and an Oscar winner himself, came into the film El Cid with a sense of ownership over the project. Initially, he was satisfied with the script, but everything changed when Loren entered the scene. Equally famous, acclaimed, and strong-willed, Loren demanded script rewrites, 
more romantic scenes for her character, and a shooting schedule tailored to her availability. Eight to ten weeks, no more. To top it off, she negotiated a significant payday, with reports suggesting a staggering $200,000, a considerable sum in those days. Reports also hinted at the tension between the co-stars. Allegedly, Loren's paycheck surpassed Heston's, and the situation escalated when he insisted on a stand-in for any close-up scenes that solely featured Loren's face. Director Anthony Mann found himself in the midst of a power struggle, trying to coax the alpha male character into acknowledging Loren on set. Number 22. Claudia Cardinal Moving on to Claudia Cardinal, an actress who graced the screen with some of the finest filmmakers and the most handsome actors of the 60s and 70s. Her enviable list of co-stars includes Marlon Brando, Alain Delon, Marcello Mastriani, and Jean-Paul Belmondo. Cardinal, often described as a symbol and named among the 50 most beautiful women in film history by the Los Angeles Times in 2011, had an undeniable allure. In our interview, she exuded an air of mystery, adorned in all black with jewelry that emphasized her hands and wrists. Accompanied by her daughter, Claudia Squitieri, the two provided insights into a life that reads like a captivating movie script. John Wayne affectionately labeled her a tomboy, while David Niven hailed her as the most beautiful Italian invention since spaghetti. With a filmography spanning over 150 titles, Cardinal's career unfolded like a cinematic masterpiece. From jealous scenes with Robert De Niro to unrequited love for Marlon Brando, her life off-screen was as enthralling as her on-screen performances in classics like The Leopard, Once Upon a Time in the West, and Fellini's Eight and a Half. Number 21. Julie Christie In the 1960s, Julie Christie was the tousle-haired blonde with the dazzling smile, bracing the silver screen in iconic films like Darling, Dr. Zhivago, and Far From the Matting Crowd. Fast forward to today and at 66, she remains a tousle-haired blonde with that enchanting smile. Yet, the Julie Christie of legend, the one who once captivated the hearts of moviegoers, is no longer a person she identifies with. Over lunch in a pub in her East End home, Christie expressed her disconnection from the glamorous persona that once defined her. Since the late 1970s, she evolved into a reluctant actress, placing political causes above the glitz and glamour of show business. The Julie Christie who once thrived on fame has transformed into an individual uninterested in the trappings of her Hollywood legacy. She openly admits her disaffection with the film industry, apologizing for sounding prissy and ungrateful. Despite acknowledging the benefits she gained from her career, she finds the world of show business distasteful. This sentiment led her to be selective about roles, turning down more offers than she accepted, all in favor of the tranquility of her life in Mid Wales. But Christie's retreat from Hollywood didn't mean a withdrawal from the public eye. Her political activism became a defining aspect of her life. She participated in the Animals film, a passionate critique of the problems faced by the animal kingdom, showcasing her commitment beyond the confines of celebrity activism. Her involvement against nuclear weapons and with the Granum Common Peace Camp further demonstrated a focused and principled approach to causes she held dear. Currently, her efforts are channeled towards the Medical Foundation for the Victims of Torture and Survival International, organizations fighting for the rights of indigenous and tribal peoples. Christie's engagement with the Stop the War Coalition underscores her commitment to causes that extend beyond the glittering lights of Hollywood. Number 20. Catherine Deneuve French film star Catherine Deneuve sent shockwaves through the feminist world when she, along with 99 other French women, signed an open letter challenging the Me Too campaign. This act, seen as an alternative view to the movement, triggered intense debates about feminism and censorship. Deneuve and her co-signatories argued against what they perceived as a puritanical wave of purification within the Me Too movement. They contended that the campaign had transformed from freeing women to speak into a force that intimidated those who didn't conform to the prescribed narrative. This letter, straightforward and at times poorly edited, declared that attempts to seduce someone, even clumsily, should not be equated to a crime. However, the letter faced harsh criticism on social media, with accusations ranging from being lobotomized by internal misogyny to being out of touch with contemporary women's issues. 
Deneuve and her counterparts were portrayed as overprivileged celebrities and intellectuals more concerned with defending their freedom than empathizing with the victims of harassment. While the letter had its flaws, including the controversial notion of men's right to pester, it sparked a vital conversation about the diversity of perspectives within the feminist movement. Number 19. Anne Bancroft Born Anna Maria Luisa Italiano in 1931 in the Bronx, Anne Bancroft grew up to be a multifaceted actress in person. Acting held a special place in her heart, but only if the play or movie had substance, a story that meant something. Despite being in a very public profession, Bancroft disliked being dissected by others and having her secrets probed. There was a dichotomy within her, a desire to be cared for, yet a sharpness that prevented just anyone from fulfilling that role. Jealousy surrounded Bancroft due to her embodiment of seemingly contradictory qualities. She possessed the sensuality of a captivating woman accustomed to commanding any room, juxtaposed with the quick and bright capacity for rage of someone born and raised in the Bronx. Douglas K. Daniel, in his detailed portrait of Bancroft, highlights her complex nature. Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate is a testament to Bancroft's prowess, portraying a character that is funny, alluring, and self-aware, despite the cliched turn the script forces upon her in the climax. Number 18. Bridget Bardot Renowned for her extensive modeling career and roles in films like And God Created Woman in 1956, Bridget Bardot faced legal troubles due to comments attacking Islam and its followers. She had been fined five times previously for such comments. In 2008, she was fined 15,000 euros for a letter to Nicholas Sarkovsky, in which she referred to Muslims as a population destroying us, destroying our country by imposing its acts. After retiring from acting, Bardot became a prominent animal rights activist. In 2012, she expressed her disregard for looking conservative and awkward, stating, I'm only looking to assuage my soul and protect the animals. Her husband, Bernard de Armelay, was an advisor to the far-right French party National Front, now known as the National Rally. And in 2017, Bardot threw her support behind Marine Le Pen, the party's leader known for anti-Muslim comments. Bardot's fines were linked to comments about Islam in her books, Pluto's Square, and A Scream in the Silence. During a 2004 court appearance defending herself over A Scream in the Silence, Bardot apologized but maintained, I never knowingly wanted to hurt anybody. It's not in my character. Among Muslims, I think there are some who are very good and some hoodlums, like everywhere. Number 17. Janet Lee. While Janet Lee was undeniably a great actress, her personal life was marred by a tumultuous relationship with Tony Curtis. The Hollywood power couple, famous for their roles in iconic films like Psycho and Some Like It Hot, were far from a fairy tale behind closed doors. Despite their initial seemingly passionate love, their marriage eventually crumbled under the weight of resentment, competition, jealousy, and rancor. Tony Curtis and Janet Leigh tied the knot in 1951, defying expectations and defying studio heads who wanted Curtis to marry his frequent co-star, Piper Laurie. Curtis admitted that he began feeling inferior to Lee, who was already an established star. The fractures in their relationship grew, leading to what Jamie Lee Curtis, their daughter, describes as a childhood marked by resentment, competition, jealousy, and rancor. Curtis acknowledged his struggles with self-confidence in the face of Lee's success. She, like most people I met in Hollywood, had more self-confidence than I did. I badly wanted her to admire me back. Despite efforts to maintain a functional marriage, it became apparent that the love they once had had turned into a functional but unromantic marriage. Curtis, known for his womanizing ways, grew increasingly jealous when Lee was around other men, even accusing her of having an affair with Frank Sinatra. Jamie Lee Curtis, reflecting on her role as the supposed save the marriage baby, admitted, like any other save the marriage baby, I failed. Number 16. Mia Farrow Mia Farrow's life has been marred by highly publicized family drama, especially concerning her relationship with Woody Allen. The controversies reached a peak when her daughter, Dylan Farrow, accused Allen of sexual assault, sparking a renewed public interest in the decades-old allegations. Dylan's open letter detailed harrowing incidents she claims happened 20 years ago. 
While her brother Ronan and mother Mia stood by her side, another brother, Moses Farrow, a family therapist, took a different stance. Moses alleged that Mia was the abusive party, not Woody Allen, and accused Mia of coaching Dylan to make the accusations. The Pharaoh allen saga began when Woody Allen started a relationship with Soon Yi Previn, Mia Pharaoh's adopted daughter. Moses Pharaoh claimed that his mother was emotionally and physically hurtful towards her children. The family rift and the resurfacing of allegations have led to a deeply divided narrative, with each member presenting a different side of the story. Amidst the renewed controversy, Woody Allen's attorney placed blame on Mia Farrow, stating, the one to blame for Dylan's distress is neither Dylan nor Woody Allen. Number 15. Honor Blackman While the James Bond film Goldfinger may have elevated Honor Blackman's career, she openly resents the iconic role of Pussy Galore. Despite being a Bond girl and gaining widespread recognition, Blackman insists she never considered herself a symbol and hated watching herself on screen. Surprisingly, she revealed that she turned down roles that required a woman because she didn't see herself in such parts, expressing a preference for playing the secretary. Before her Bond stint, Blackman shot to fame as crime fighter Kathy Gale in the hit spy show The Avengers, co-starring with Patrick McInerney as John Steed from 1962 to 1964. Leaving the series at the age of 39, she became one of the oldest Bond girls, appearing opposite Sean Connery in the third James Bond film. Despite any reservations about her Bond experience, she praises Connery's Bond as the sexiest creature she has ever met and acknowledges him as a fun person to work with. However, Blackman doesn't hold back when it comes to criticizing Connery's political choices, referring to him as a hypocrite for accepting a knighthood but not residing in the UK and supporting Scottish independence. Despite political differences, she speaks highly of their onset camaraderie and Connery's charm. Number 14. Shirley MacLaine in the Hollywood feud between Shirley MacLaine and Sir Anthony Hopkins during the making of the 1980 film A Change of Seasons, there is no sugarcoating their feelings. The movie, depicting a married couple engaging in affairs during a ski trip, received critical and financial disappointment, possibly influencing the actor's perspectives on the experience. Hopkins, in an unambiguous statement, referred to MacLaine as the most obnoxious actress I have ever worked with. Although the specific reasons for his strong reaction weren't elaborated, this candid remark become widely known, reflecting a less than harmonious working relationship. The film's lackluster performance and the contentious dynamic between the co-stars, as evidenced by Hopkins' statement, add a layer of intrigue to the behind-the-scenes story of a change of seasons. While on-screen chemistry doesn't always translate into off-screen rapport, in this case, the actors' public comments have left an enduring impression of their discordant collaboration. Number 13. Tippi Hedren Despite being a talented actress, Tippi Hedren faced animosity from film fans due to her tumultuous relationship with director Alfred Hitchcock. Hitchcock, known for classics like The Birds and Marnie, allegedly threatened to ruin Hedren's career after she rebuffed his advances. This revelation gained renewed attention when Hedren's granddaughter, Dakota Johnson, discussed it on Awards Chatter podcast. Hedren, now 91, has been open about her challenging experiences working with Hitchcock. In her 2016 memoir titled Tippy, she detailed instances of assault by Hitchcock during the filming of The Birds and Marnie. The actress, mother of Melanie Griffith, exposed the allegedly inhumane conditions she endured on Hitchcock's insistence during the climactic scene in The Birds. Hedren also recounted disturbing encounters, such as Hitchcock having his driver pass her home and attempting to force her into unwanted physical contact. Dakota Johnson emphasized Hedren's resilience and advocacy for standing up against mistreatment. The Hitchcock ordeal left a lasting impact on Hedren's career, highlighting the darker side of Hollywood's power dynamics. Number 12. Barbara Steele Barbara Steele, hailed as the queen of horror, experienced a shift in public sentiment despite being adored for her roles in Italian horror masterpieces like Black Sunday, 1960. Born on December 29, 1937 in Birkenhead, England, Steele was celebrated for her talent, intelligence, and dark, mysterious beauty that epitomized both innocence and malign evil. 
Steele's breakout role came at the age of 21 in Black Sunday, a quintessential Italian film about witchcraft. However, despite her success in horror, Steele grew weary of being typecast in the genre, leading her to declare, I never want to climb out of another coffin again. This decision disappointed her legion of horror fans and, in terms of her career, proved to be a misstep. In a turn of events, Steele met screenwriter James Poe in America, and they married, remaining together for many years. The shift in her career trajectory reflected the challenges actors face when pigeonholed into specific genres, illustrating the complexities of fame and artistic choice. Number 11. Julie Andrews Julie Andrews, renowned for her iconic roles in The Sound of Music and Mary Poppins, faced surprising accusations about her off-screen demeanor. Richard Harris, her co-star in the 1966 film Hawaii, shared unflattering insights into Andrews' personality. According to Harris, he had rarely, if ever, experienced such hatred for a person as he did for Andrews during their collaboration. In a biography written by Michael Feeney Callan, titled Richard Harris, The Biography, Harris described Andrews as condescending and mean. He suggested that Andrews might have been bothered by his evident enjoyment on set. Harris recounted instances where he playfully challenged Andrews after overhearing her quiet conversations with a director, disrupting her supposed conspiratorial tone. This revelation presented a stark contrast to Andrews' on-screen persona, challenging the public's perception of the beloved actress. It serves as a reminder that actors' real personalities can differ significantly from the characters they portray, adding a layer of complexity to their public image. Number 10. Anne Margaret Anne Margaret, the Swedish-American actress and singer, shared a profound connection with Elvis Presley during their collaboration and romantic involvement. In her 1994 memoir, Anne Margaret, My Story, she delved into the deep bond they formed, emphasizing the similarities in their upbringing and frustrations within the entertainment industry. During their time together, both Anne Margaret and Elvis were attempting to break free from the constraints of their established images. The actress highlighted their shared values, rooted in old-fashioned conservatism such as respect for elders, doing the right thing, kindness, and gratitude. Despite the challenges of Hollywood, they found solace in each other's company and enjoyed a genuine, old-fashioned courtship. Anne Margaret's memoir paints a picture of a supportive and respectful relationship, where Elvis would visit her parents' home, share meals, and engage in family activities. Their connection went beyond a typical Hollywood romance, with both expressing admiration and encouragement for each other's careers. The actress candidly stated in her book, I will never recover from Elvis's death, underscoring the profound impact of Presley's passing on her life. The genuine affection and camaraderie they shared remain etched in her memories, transcending the typical celebrity relationships often associated with the entertainment industry. Number 9. Jean Moreau Jean Moreau, an iconic figure in French cinema, was born to an English mother and a French father. Despite facing disapproval from her father, Moreau pursued her passion for acting at the Comédie Française. Her early marriage to fellow student Jean-Louis Richard ended in divorce after two years, but their connection endured, as did many of her relationships. A literary enthusiast who found resonance with the rebellious Antigone, Moreau's career took a transformative turn when she fell in love with director Louis Mali during Elevator to the Gallows, 1957. This collaboration marked the beginning of her rise to stardom. Living with Molly during the making of The Lovers, 1958, their relationship stirred controversy due to the film's explicit content. Reflecting on love and relationships, Moreau expressed a nuanced perspective. She viewed former lovers as akin to brothers, emphasizing the impossibility of burying them in hatred or oblivion. Moreau's multifaceted approach to love was encapsulated in her metaphor, love is like the soup. The first spoonfuls are too hot, the last one's too cold. Her openness about the complexities of love added layers to her public persona, distinguishing her from traditional Hollywood narratives. Number 8. Deborah Kerr Deborah Kerr, a distinguished actress spanning the film industry from Pinewood to Hollywood, left an indelible mark on cinema. Recognized with an honorary Academy Award, Kerr stood among the select few actresses honored with this distinction. 
Her career, blending intelligence with poetic sensibilities, featured notable roles in Powell Pressburger masterpieces and American classics. In her 20s, Kerr starred in Powell Pressburger classics such as The Life and Death of Colonel Blimp, 1943, and Black Narcissus, 1947. As her career progressed, she embraced more controversial and taboo roles, portraying young women facing dire circumstances in films like Love on a Dole, 1941, Hatter's Castle, 1942, The Day Will Dawn, 1942, and I See a Dark Stranger, 1946. Despite her impactful contributions to cinema, comprehensive biographies capturing the essence of Kerr's artistry, mass appeal, and charismatic personality remain limited. Biographer Michelangelo Capua's Deborah Kerr, a biography, 2010, provides an overview, yet Kerr's multifaceted nature continues to challenge encapsulation in traditional narratives. Kerr's filmography includes timeless classics, such as From Here to Eternity, The King and I, Heaven Knows Mr. Allison, An Affair to Remember, and The Sundowners. Her ability to tackle diverse roles showcased her versatility and contributed to her enduring legacy in the cinematic landscape. Number 7. Patricia Neal In 1961, Patricia Neal took on the role of Mrs. Emily Eustace, 2E, Fallonson in Breakfast at Tiffany's, starring alongside Audrey Hepburn. The film, a classic in cinema history, featured a tumultuous behind-the-scenes dynamic involving the casting of George Pappard as Paul Varjak, the struggling writer originally intended to be played by Steve McQueen. Despite initial enjoyment working with Pappard, Neil's opinion took a sharp turn after a near-violent incident on set. Neil shared her candid thoughts, stating, I was thrilled when I heard we were going to be in it together, but it wasn't long until I saw that since I last saw him, he had grown so cold and conceited. The tension escalated to the point where director Blake Edwards and Pappard almost engaged in a fistfight over creative differences during a scene blocking. Recounting the incident, Neil expressed a strong dislike for Pappard, saying, On one occasion, Blake and George almost had a fistfight. We were trying to block a scene and George wanted to change everything that Blake had planned. And George got so terrible that Blake almost hit him. I got them to stop, but I think George got his way. I hated him from that moment on. Even Audrey Hepburn, known for her amicable demeanor, found Pappard challenging to work with, surprising the film's producer, Richard Shepard. The clash of personalities on set added an intriguing layer to the creation of a cinematic masterpiece. Number 6. Ava Gardner Ava Gardner, often regarded as Hollywood's bad girl, lived a life that rivaled the drama of the characters she portrayed on screen. Her three marriages, each a chapter in fame, showcased her as a compelling figure in the Hollywood narrative. At 19, Gardner's first marriage to Mickey Rooney, a prominent MGM star, was orchestrated to secure her compliance in crossing certain boundaries. Her second marriage to jazz star Artie Shaw involved an unconventional living arrangement and an attempt to refine Gardner through reading and therapy. The third to the legendary Frank Sinatra marked the union of two major stars, with Gardner emerging as an icon of the emerging jet set lifestyle. By 1988, Gardner, once Hollywood's most irresistible woman, faced financial challenges, health issues, and the intent to sell her memoirs. Choosing Peter Evans as her ghostwriter, Gardner's story unfolded against the backdrop of Evans's legal battles with Sinatra, adding another layer of complexity to the tale of a Hollywood legend. Number 5. Anna Magnani Described by Time as the most explosive emotional actress of her generation, Anna Magnani's screen persona has been closely associated with post-war Italian culture and neorealism. Magnani's portrayal of Pina in Rossellini's Rome Open City established her as a symbol of passionate authenticity. However, the notion of her passionate authenticity is re-examined here, delving into the complexity of Magnani's persona. The chapter scrutinizes Magnani's performance style, emphasizing her trademark of volubility, expressing emotions through laughter, tears, singing, shouting, and fighting. It challenges the conventional understanding of Magnani's vocal excess, arguing that her Italian excess can be nuanced through comparative analysis of her roles in American films of the 1950s, where questions of accent and otherness came to the forefront. The exploration culminates in an examination of Magnani's performance in The Fugitive Kind, 
in 1960. Number 4. Raquel Welch Raquel Welch catapulted to international icon status with her unforgettable appearance in the 1966 film One Million Years B.C., had a Hollywood career that spanned nearly six decades. Though her fame soared with her smoldering looks and curvy figure, Welch grappled with a complicated relationship with her own persona. Despite her determination to prove herself beyond being a symbol, Welch found that her fame remained intrinsically tied to her sexuality. While she proudly resisted certain scenes, her regrettable acceptance of the connection between her fame and sensuality was palpable. Her career reached new heights with The Three Musketeers in 1973, earning her a Golden Globe, but her personal life faced challenges after a divorce from her second husband, Patrick Curtis. In a surprising turn of events at the age of 30, Welch received a nominal divorce settlement of just $1 and had to split all her property including her Beverly Hills home and production companies, with Curtis, despite their marriage lasting less than three years. She entered into a third marriage with Andre Wenfield in 1980, emphasizing the deep love she felt for him despite her earlier declaration of never marrying again. Number 3. Jane Mansfield Jane Mansfield, a blonde bombshell of Hollywood's golden era, strategically embraced the image of a dumb blonde throughout her adult life. While not an original in this persona, she committed to the role created by others with Mae West and Marilyn Monroe as predecessors. Mansfield, with her distinctive measurements of 40, 22, 35, played up the stereotype of the dumb blonde to the extreme, becoming a larger-than-life figure with a focus on publicity. Initially hired by 20th Century Fox to serve as leverage against Monroe during contract negotiations, Mansfield's fame existed in the shadow of the iconic Monroe. Cast in Monroe-like roles in the beginning, Mansfield lacked the acting prowess and natural warmth of her predecessor. Despite starring in Broadway's successful Will Success Spoil Rock Hunter, a role she played successfully on stage, she never matched Monroe's genuine appeal. Monroe's charm stemmed from a fresh quality and a hint of the girl next door, elements Mansfield struggled to comprehend. While equipped with the external attributes, she failed to unlock the secret to Monroe's allure. Number 2. Judy Garland Judy Garland's journey in the entertainment industry began at a young age, and her rise to fame as a child actor came with lasting consequences. At 17, Garland filmed the iconic 1939 movie The Wizard of Oz, marking the beginning of a challenging path for her career and life. A prodigious talent in acting and singing since childhood, Garland signed with MGM at 13, leading to her starring role as Dorothy Gale in The Wizard of Oz. While the film became a classic, Garland's experience as its lead was far from ideal. Despite being integral to almost every scene, she was the lowest paid actor in the production. Although she contributed significantly to MGM's financial success, her unconventional looks in comparison to the bombshell beauties of the era, as described by MGM director Charles Walters, led to her being considered the ugly duckling of movie stars. Despite becoming MGM's highest-grossing star at the peak of her career, Garland faced problems that resulted in her dismissal from the starring role in Annie Get Your Gun in 1949. A little over a decade after The Wizard of Oz, she was fired from MGM permanently, left without a movie contract. Garland's story reflects the challenges faced by child stars as they navigate the complexities of fame. Number 1. Natalie Wood Natalie Wood's life unfolded like a tale released from a genie's lamp, revealing a narrative marked by various demons and challenging origins. Her journey through Hollywood carried burdens that stemmed from family violence, a tumultuous relationship with her controlling stage mother, psychological challenges as a child star, and a series of phobias and paranoias. Even her childhood bedroom, adorned with storybook dolls she believed were alive and spoke to her, spoke volumes about the complexities she faced. As a young actress, Wood was forced to return an engagement ring to her high school sweetheart, a precursor to the exploitative experiences she encountered in Hollywood. At a young age, she found herself entangled with 42-year-old director Nicholas Ray in Rebel Without a Cause, a film that pushed her to prove she could portray a bad girl. However, the deepest secret in Wood's closet of skeletons was the shocking end of her fairy tale marriage to Bobby Sox idol Robert Wagner. 
In 1961, to protect Wagner's image, Wood publicly took responsibility for their sudden divorce. Despite rumors circulating in fan magazines about an alleged affair with co-star Warren Beatty during the filming of Splendor in the Grass, Wood never refuted them. The tragic end of Natalie Wood's life cast a shadow over the hatred she endured, particularly during her portrayal of Maria in West Side Story. Criticism centered on her not being Puerto Rican and perceived shortcomings in her acting and singing abilities. Additionally, the resentment stemmed from the fact that Wood did not sing her own songs in the iconic film. And there you have it, guys. The 25 most hated Hollywood actresses of the 1960s. If you enjoyed this trip video, give us a thumbs up, comment below with your thoughts, and don't forget to subscribe for more captivating content about Hollywood's untold stories. Well, until next time, stay tuned. Catch you in the next video.